I just got up from a nap with makeup on and um, I feel like a potato. So I really don't feel like filming today, but we're gonna do it anyway. <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. A lot has happened today. Today I woke up at 6 a.m. for a photo shoot and then I did said photo shoot and then I went and got my second dose of the vaccine. Then I napped for a little bit and now I'm filming and I feel absolutely exhausted. I feel kind of like a potato, but we gotta, we gotta film the video. We gotta make it happen. So here I am. So it's been quite the day today and now we're gonna do another thing, which is obviously make this video. So. As you guys have seen, I've been making videos where I take pre-made cosplays and I alter them. Um, this is because I, obviously I, I figured that it would be, you know, a fun and helpful video um, for a lot of you watching. But the other reason is because I've been mostly buying my cosplays over the past year. And that's because the pandemic really killed my motivation. So I haven't had the motivation to make things from scratch until today. So I thought I would take this opportunity to make a video where I document the process of me making a cosplay from scratch, walking you guys through the process, and that that will hopefully be a helpful video for some of you guys. So um, very exciting. We're doing something new today on the channel and I'm going do my best to make it as interesting and informative as possible but obviously I'm still new to this kind of video so it it might take me a little while to dial it in but I've been watching a lot of Rachel Maxey who I absolutely love and I've been trying to take notes from her videos hopefully I will do an okay job on this video um the cosplay in question that we will be making today is I realize a very obscure cosplay it's not one that a lot of you will probably recognize so I don't know how helpful this video will be I'm really talking up this video as you guys can can tell. I'm really I'm really selling it. The character that I will be cosplaying for this video is Emmy Altava from the Professor Layton series because during the pandemic, a lot of people have been joking about how the pandemic makes you kind of revert to doing things that you did when you were a teenager. And for me, that's been revisiting the Professor Layton series. So I've been playing the prequel games because I, I only ever played like a quarter of the first prequel game. Um, so I've been going back and playing all the prequel games because I never played them before and I'm gonna then move on to the original set of games. So obviously playing the prequel games, Emmy is one of the protagonists and she's badass and I love her. So naturally I felt the need to cosplay her. I actually did cosplay Flora back when I was a teenager and I do intend to cosplay her again, but for right now the cosplay is over at my dad's house so I don't have access to it. So I figured in the meantime, I would cosplay Emmy and let that kind of be my, my proclamation that I love Professor Layton. Let that be my way of, of showing my love for Professor Layton and then a little bit down the road when I eventually get my Flora cosplay back I can then cosplay her so that's the plan so anyway I'm gonna be walking you guys through the process of me making this cosplay I'm really sad that people don't talk about Professor Layton anymore like a lot of people talked about it during the 2010s but nobody talks about these games anymore which I think is such a shame so I hope that like making this video and making this cosplay will kind of invite people to to nerd out and talk about Professor Layton again because not enough people talk about the series uh, anymore. So anyway, I'm rambling a lot. I'm gonna give you guys a quick look at what I got. I didn't get very much because it's a pretty simple cosplay. So the first thing I got is this um, yellow cotton. Very nice. Um, then I also got some thread, naturally. Gotta have your thread. I also got some buttons. So her jacket has um, one big button at the front. So that's what I'm going to use that for. I also thought it'd be nice to put buttons on the cuffs. She canonically does not have this, but I thought that would be a nice kind of personal touch to add to it and would kind of add some more depth and dimension to the design. So that's what these smaller buttons are going to be for. And then I got a whole bunch of clasps. Oh, oh my gosh. They're, they're, they're going any, everywhere. Um, I got a whole bunch of these clasps to put at the front of the jacket as my closure. I didn't know how many I'd need. So I I just grabbed a whole bunch of them and hopefully that will be enough. I'm sure it will be enough. Um, so anyway, that's the plan. Let's get into it. So this is the pattern that I'm going to be using. This is Vogue 1290, which is my most favorite pattern ever. I've used it for many different cosplays. I've used it, I think, for most of the cosplays that I've done. So it, it's one that's gotten a lot of use, a lot of love, as you can see by the packaging. It's it's very well loved. Um, I'm using it because it's going to give the structure that we want. It's going to make a nice fitted jacket that has a bit of a taper. 
um, on the bottom and it's very straightforward and easy to use which you guys will see when I start actually making the jacket so overall it's the perfect pattern to use for this project so um, without any further ado let's get everything cut out Okay, so now I am cutting out the front piece. And what I want to show you guys is that um, this pattern, the front on both sides is meant to, they're meant to just meet each other. Um, but obviously for Emmy's jacket, we want to have snaps in the front because it's supposed to look like it's buttoned up. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be extending this piece not not up here but down here where the two pieces are going to meet i'm going to be extending this piece a little bit forward here when i go to cut it out so that they'll um, overlap in the front rather than just meeting each other in the front so that's one major adjustment i'm going to be making to this pattern All right, so I just got home from an impromptu trip to the fabric store because I discovered while I was cutting out these pattern pieces that I did not buy nearly enough fabric to be able to line this project and I really want to be able to line it. So I went out and I got some lining for the jacket and then I also got some pink for the bow tie because I realized the pinks that I have on hand, even though I have a bunch of pink fabric, none of them would be the right shade. So. There we go. I also got a belt buckle because I forgot that she totally has a belt and needs a buckle for the belt. So there was my impromptu trip down to the fabric store. I intended to sew all day today, but obviously that's not what happened. Um, but anyway, now that that's all done, I'm gonna wash this fabric and then we can get back to it. Yay! All right, so I've got all my pattern pieces all cut out and ironed and ready to go. So I thought that I would just lay them out for anyone who isn't familiar with how patterns work, just to kind of give you guys a visual of how I'm gonna be putting this together. So this is the front, this is the side, front this is the side back and this is the back so I'm going to be sewing all of these together in this formation and then the two shoulder pieces so this piece here and that piece there are going to be sewn together so all together it's going to make the jacket and then from there I can put the sleeves in and yeah so uh, without any further ado I'm gonna go and pin everything together and then I can get sewing Okay, so I have it all sewn together and I've decided to wear it with my with my pants and, and the boots to see what it all looks like. And it really looks like a dress more than a jacket. So I'm gonna have to take it up a whole lot, like probably by like four inches or so, 
to make it actually proper. Um, but this is where I'm at right now. I'm probably going to put it away for the night and come back to it tomorrow. Um, but for right now, that's where we're at. That's, that's what I've done. I'm very happy that it's too long rather than too short. I did obviously cut out the pattern shorter than it's actually supposed to be, but it wasn't short enough, which is obviously better than it being too short. Um, but anyway, my next step is going to be to cut it down, uh, to make it more like a jacket rather than a dress. And then we can go from there. So after after I cut down the jacket, I then started on the lining. So for this, I just cut out the same pattern again, just in my lining fabric, and then made basically a duplicate of the jacket. Then I took that duplicate and pinned it right sides together to the actual jacket. I sewed everything together, then I flipped it inside out at the sleeves, gave the whole thing a really good pressing, and then I top stitched everything. And then after that, I started work on the sleeves. All right, so I've put on the sleeves. There they are. And on the other side, there we go. Um, honestly, it looks real janky. This whole jacket is looking so janky. Um, as you can see, I have some puckering here, which I'm, I'm gonna try and fix, obviously, but like the sleeves did not go on very smoothly. Like this one's puckering really, really badly. There's excess fabric. And I don't know if that's the fact that I just lined it the wrong way. Like I feel like I'm still new to lining things and I feel like I did it the wrong way. So there's like extra fabric in certain places. It's looking real janky is basically what I'm getting at. I don't know if that's just me being self-critical or if it genuinely looks bad. I'm sure people will totally let me know in the comments. Um, please be nice to me. So anyway, I'm going to try and fix that. Next, I'm going to work on the collar. I'm going to try putting the collar on and I'm going to see if that makes everything look better, which it probably won't. Anyway, point is sewing is definitely a learning experience. So this is just going to be a learning opportunity for me and that's just how it's going to go. So anyway, I'm going to get to work on the collar. All right, so I have the collar on and honestly, it doesn't look as bad as I thought it was going to be because I did this the complete wrong way. This pattern isn't meant to have a collar put onto it, so I had to kind of improvise and there is a right way to do this, but I have just stopped caring, so I definitely did not do this the right way. So yeah, so like it has this raw edge on the inside, which you won't see, but it totally undoes the whole point of lining this jacket. So what I've accepted is that this cosplay is just a disaster. It's just a disaster. And you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. That's really just <laughs> why am I even making this video if this cosplay is a disaster? I don't I don't know. Do you is this enjoyable to watch? I, I, I don't know. Um, but anyway, we're, we're on the collar now. Um, I need to fix the sleeves still. And then I'm going to move on to probably putting on either, well, you know, I think I'm going to make the belt next probably because I feel like the belt is really going to save <laughs> a lot of the problems with this cosplay. Um, but anyway, short version of the story, this cosplay is a disaster. I've just accepted that. And that's just, that's just, what we're dealing with right now. Then for the pouch, I just ripped the pouch off of my Robina cosplay because that's a cosplay that I don't plan to ever wear again. And I made some alterations to it. I just added some loops in the back so that it could go onto the belt. And here it is on the belt. Very nice, very nice. 
Then I worked on the notions. So I added the clasps to the front of the jacket, added the button to the front of the jacket and added the buttons to the cuff of the jacket. Then I made the bow tie, which was very simple. So what I did is I just made a rectangle out of my pink fabric. Then I squished it in the middle, sewed that down. And then I made a ribbon and put that around the middle to conceal it. And here's the finished bow, very nice. And I also added a little safety pin to the back of the bow so that it could attach to my shirt. Hello, I'm coming at you in my beautiful egg form because I'm about to put on my cosplay. But before I do, there's one last piece of this cosplay that I have to show you guys. I went online to find a prop camera and finding a prop camera, am I in focus? Yes, okay, good. Um, finding a prop camera was, because she has a camera, I should probably say that for people who don't know the characters. She has a camera that she carries around. She's really big in pho photography. So I thought it would really make this cosplay if I had a fake camera to use with it. And I have another cosplay that I want to do that also requires a camera. So I, I looked around at prop sites, didn't have any luck. Looked around on eBay, didn't have any luck because getting even broken cameras is super expensive. So the cheapest one that I could find was on Etsy. Uh, it came to $66 Canadian after shipping and everything. So a little bit pricey for what it is, but I'm very excited. So it came in the mail very quickly. Um, I'm really impressed with that. And we're just gonna un unbox it here today. Ooh, oh, this looks, I'm really excited. Oh my goodness. Here it is. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> Wow. So yeah, this is this is a broken camera. It obviously just like does not work anymore. And it's pretty old looking. For all I know, it could be from the 80s or something, which totally doesn't match up with the Professor Layton timeline. But like even when it comes to historical accuracy and Professor Layton, <laughs> there is no historical accuracy in Professor Layton. The time periods are all over the place. So I feel like no matter when this camera is from, it looks old and I think it will do, it will it will work. So anyway, here it is, I'm very excited. So um, this is my $66 broken camera that I'm gonna be using for my cosplays. And um, you know what? I think it's $66 well spent because I think this is a great prop. All of that said, uh, let's get to the reveal. All right, so wrap up thoughts on this cosplay. I just want to point out that I am filming this outro six months after I actually finished this cosplay because making this video was very daunting for me um, just because I thought it would be a lot of editing and a lot of just like, I don't know, just documenting the cosplay creation process has always been a very daunting like thing for me. Um, but it actually, I, like I've started editing this video before I've, I'm filming this outro and it's actually come together very easily. So I'm definitely gonna be doing more videos like this and they're not gonna take me six months to make. Yay. <laughs> anyway, so um, I made this cosplay back in July and I'm, it's it's now December and I'm gonna do my wrap up thoughts on this cosplay. Um, yeah, so overall, I think it looks good in photos. It looks good in videos. A huge thank you to my friend Steph for filming the showcase video for this cosplay. I really, really, really appreciate it. And um, yeah, like I think it, it looks good from like five feet away, but if you really get up close to it and you look at, you know, the puckering in the, in the shoulders and the fact that the collar isn't done properly and just the fact that it's kind of like wrinkly when you put it all together, like the belt really helps a lot in making the jacket look okay. <laughs> the fact that it's cinched in the, in, in the waist makes it look like it sits okay, but if you don't have the belt, it sits really weird. There's just a lot of things that are very janky about this cosplay that I'm not super happy with, but um, 
it is what it is. I really chalk that up to the fact that I'm still new to lining garments. I feel like I just did the lining wrong. Maybe. <laughs> so yeah, so it's a cosplay that like looks okay, but as far as like actual sew, like proper sewing technique goes, um, we have some issues, but um, that's what learning is for. So hopefully my next project that I line, I will not have this problem. Uh, but for, for this particular project, it didn't come out the way that I imagined. And the thing is that like, I went into it being like, oh, I'm gonna do this all properly. It's gonna be a beautiful crisp jacket. I'm gonna do my best. And then halfway through, I just stopped caring. I just like, I was so over it by, by like halfway through. So there's that as well. Sometimes cosplays are like that. Sometimes you go into it being like, oh, this is going to be beautiful, absolutely gorgeously made. And then you come out of it being like, I couldn't care less. Um, so anyway, those are my wrap up thoughts for this cosplay. I also just want to say that, um, like I've posted photos of this cosplay and this cosplay particularly blew up on TikTok. Oh my gosh. I had a, a video reach like 45,000 views and it, and like 400 comments. And it was all people being like, Oh my gosh, it's Emmy. I love professor Layton. And that just warms my heart so much that people like remember Professor Layton and they like my Emmy cosplay. That means so much. So thank you guys like so much. If you're one of those people who saw my TikToks, saw my Instagram posts and were like, oh my gosh, it's Emmy. I love that. Thank you. You made my, you made my summer basically um, because my whole summer was just me being obsessed over Professor Layton. So like that really like made my summer. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully there will be people in the comments of this video being like, Hey, Professor Layton is awesome. Um, if you're one of those people, please leave me a comment and we can chat about Professor Layton because I would love to do that. I would love to just geek out with you guys over Professor Layton. So good. I'm finally almost done. Well, I think I'm almost done. I hear that the ending to Azran Legacy is a whirlwind. So I don't know if I'm actually at the ending, but it feels like I'm near the ending. Anyway, I'm finishing up Azran Legacy right now. I got a really bad spoiler for it, so I'm not happy about that. But um, I am going to be basically over the holidays working on finishing up Azran Legacy, and then I can move on to the prequel games, and then I can hopefully do my Flora cosplay. So anyway, I'm just yammering on about Professor Layton at this point. Anyway, I hope this video was, was entertaining and that you could take some things away from it. I will definitely be making more videos like this in the future. Right now I'm working on a Bungo Stray Dogs cosplay that I'm gonna be documenting the process of. So look out for that. Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I really appreciate it. If you're new here and you'd like to see more videos like this, I put out new videos every Sunday and it would be awesome to have you here. So please consider subscribing. Uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me as always. And I really appreciate it. And I'll see you guys all next time. Until then, pinch bases, please be sure to take care. Bye. Bye.